The inspiration to build bioelectrochemical systems came from the discovery of certain microbes that live in soil. These bacteria swim up to a solid metal such as iron and transfer electrons to the metal, dissolving it in the process. This is similar to aerobic bacteria that transfer electrons to molecules of oxygen during respiration. The electron transfer generates electricity and where there's electricity, there's power. To harvest the electricity, a bioelectrochemical fuel cell is used. This system consists of two compartments, an anode compartment and a cathode compartment. These two compartments are separated by a membrane. A biofilm grows on the anode. An organic feedstream, such as wastewater, enters the fuel cell where it is oxidized by the biofilm. Simultaneously, oxidized products leave the fuel cell. The oxidation of organics, for instance acetate, produces electrons and protons. This half reaction releases a certain amount of energy. Electrons are conducted over the wire, while protons move through the membrane to the cathode to uphold electron neutrality. Oxygen is supplied to the cathode chamber and there accepts the electrons and reacts with the protons to form water. This half reaction also releases a certain amount of energy. The theoretical maximum energy gain is determined by combining both half reactions. However, resistances are found in multiple layers of the fuel cell. The ohmic losses are found in the electrical wire and in the proton transfer from the anode to the cathode. Concentration losses occur when the rate of mass transport to either the anode or cathode compartment limits the rate of product formation. Bacterial metabolic losses can be described by the amount of energy that is used by the microbes to grow. The energy is harvested to form a proton gradient over the inner membrane. Activation losses are described by the capacity of the biofilm to transfer the electrons to the anode. Certain organisms can grow conductive nanowires, called pili, that directly interact with the anode to transfer electrons. Okay, today we're out in the wild. And we're looking for some sludge to power our bio battery. I think this is a nice spot. Ah, it's perfect. Another application of bioelectrochemical systems is the production of chemicals. In this case, power must be supplied to the biofilm by an external source. Electrons are produced by the oxidation of water. Now the biofilm grows on the cathode. The energy-rich electrons are used by the organisms to fixate carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide enters the cathodic compartment and diffuses to the ca to the cathode. There, to harvest energy from the electrons, CO2 is fixed and acetate is formed.
All right, let's have a look at our bio battery. We bury the anode in our soil. Make sure there are no air bubbles in the soil. It has to be anaerobic. On top of the soil, we place the cathode, which is in direct contact with the oxygen in the air. Now let's have a look at another application of a microbial fuel cell. Desalination can be achieved by inserting an extra compartment in between the anode and the cathode. A forward osmosis membrane is placed at the anode. This allows transport of both positively and negatively charged ions. At the cathode, a cation exchange membrane is placed, which permits only transport of positively charged ions. Salt water is flowing through this compartment, while negatively charged ions move to the anode and positively charged ions move to the cathode. To finalize our bio battery and to see the energy production, we have to connect the cathode to the anode. The electricity is stored in a transformer and used to power the LED light.